We continue to motivate the idea for Swift Data in this second episode, The Seed. Last time we looked at the move from storyboards to Swift UI, and we skipped over another transition. That was the transition from Objective C to Swift. We can actually see some of this in our Swift UI code from our last episode. Remember, we connected the view controller to the storyboard, and we connected the two elements in the view controller's view using IB outlets. There was image view, which connected us to the UI image view, and label, which connected us to the UI label. And because of the way a storyboard-based app launches, you might not have noticed that there's exclamation points at the end. Image view and label are nil at some point in the launch process, and by the time everything is connected together, they're not nil. And we use the exclamation points because by the time we're in view did load, everything should be connected together. And so we don't have to use if lets before image view and label. And so that's an artifact of Objective C that's sitting there inside of our Swift code. And that's because even though our code is Swift, it sits on top of a lot of code that is written in Objective C. As we noted, many of these Swift issues disappear once we move to Swift UI views. Here we have an image that we configure and we have a text that we configured. There's no optionals, there's no waiting for things to be connected going on. Another thing to notice is that in our first case, UI image and UI label are classes, while in Swift UI, image and text are structs. It turns out that the identity for Swift UI views is a little more complicated and that's gonna inform how Swift data is implemented. So if we look back at our storyboard, you might recall that this is how we interact with it, and yet this is how it's persisted on disk, it's XML. In fact, this was the XML for that file. And so now we ask, what about the data model? We could build it ourselves, we could use a third party tool, or for a decade now, we've been able to use core data. If we build our model in core data, here's our core data's data model. It contains, in our case, three entities. Say we're building an app that manages meetings for us and we have to know which employees are gonna be at the meeting and where the meeting is. So we have these entities, employee, location, and meeting. You can think of an entity like a class or a struct. Traditionally, people like to think of them in database terms, but I'm trying to move you in the direction of Swift data. So start thinking of them as you would code them up in Swift. Here, for example, is the meeting entity. It has attributes, reason and time. Reason is a string, time is a date. An attribute is kind of like a property. You'll notice it also has relationships. It has the relationship attendees, which connects to zero or more employees. And it has a location relationship that has location as its destination. I've used properties to describe attributes and relationships. Aren't they different? They are in some ways, but we'll get to that later. Once we've set up our data model, how is it stored? And the answer, just like storyboards, is XML. Here's the XML for the data model. Let's zoom in on just one of the entities, meeting, and you'll see that meeting is backed by a class with name meeting. Meeting has two attributes. It has the attribute reason, which is a string, and it has the attribute time, which is a date. As I mentioned before, it also has two relationships. The first relationship is attendees, which is a to-many relationship, so it can link to zero or more elements of the destination entity, which is employee. There are other things we need to describe this relationship. It's optional. It has a deletion rule nullify. It has an inverse relationship whose name is meetings, which goes from the inverse entity employee back to our entity meeting. The second relationship's name is location. It has a destination entity location, and it also has deletion rules and inverse names and so on. And so those are the attributes and relationships that make up the entity meeting, and we can do the same for the other two entities, employee and location. Swift UI asks the question, what if we use Swift instead of XML to describe the UI? Analogously, Swift Data asks, what if we use Swift instead of XML to describe the data model? And that's the seed for understanding Swift Data.